Asante sana. Allow me to take this opportunity on behalf of the government and people of Kenya to welcome friends and partners who have come from far and wide to attend this very important summit to join uh, the governor of Kisumu, Professor Anyang Nyong, who has warmly welcomed all of you to Kisumu in welcoming all of you to Kenya. Um, Professor Anyang Nyong is under very strict instructions to take good care of each and every participant. And if for one reason or another he does not, please report him to me. I will figure out what to do with him. <laughs> but I am privileged to have this opportunity on behalf of the people and government of Kenya to welcome all of you to this famous Lake City, to the fourth African Sovereign Networks Conference. I am grateful to the Governor of Kisumu, Professor Peter Nyang Nyong, for the excellent preparation that I've gone into hosting this event and the partnership that they have put together with Afriak Bank. And I also want to thank Professor Benedict Rama for making time to join us for this conference. Your presence here, Benedict Rama, he, is yet another example of the unique approaches that the bank under your leadership employs in order to deepen its footprint by engaging with shareholders throughout the continent, including sub-national entities like Afri cities and devolved governments like that of Kisumu. Afriexim has consistently demonstrated innovative approaches in advancing credit to African governments and the public sector while facilitating deeper collaboration among sub-Saharan nations. And Kenya is an example. The first decision I made was to invest another $40 million in Afriexim Bank because we see the value in growing African institutions that understand our landscape, our economies better, and they can better survey, uh, support, innovate, and um, use creative means of supporting our economies. And I want to thank you, Professor, for being a champion of uh, solutions to our continent. I also want to confirm, as uh, the CS for Treasury has said, we have a framework agreement with AFRIEX in Bank of $3 billion, and they have supported many aspects of, in our economy. They have supported our imports of fuel. They have supported our commodities trade. They have supported many other aspects, and today we are going to be signing off some of the agreements that we have made in various other areas, including our infrastructure support program on roads, which we are in consultation. We are also going to um, sign off um, on matters to do with cotton value chain, and I like what Professor Anyang Nyong said here, that among the three most important uh, crops that this county and the counties in this region are involved in is cotton, you just heard from Professor Orama that uh, there is a facility that will support the cotton value chain because the cotton value chain has uh, three important aspects. Number one, it has the production sector that supports many farmers. And we have already worked with Arise, which is a company associated with Afriexim, on seed multiplication and support for farmers um, in the area of seed production, multiplication, and access to farmers. Secondly, we are also working with Afriexim on um, the next value chain, the next step, and that is the ginning, the um, uh, manufacturing, and shortly they will be investing in Rivertex and some of our textile industries. And thirdly, they will also be supporting our offtake of cotton from farmers. 
at reliable prices that can give predictability to our farmers to continue doing what they are doing in the production sector. So I will not allow you, Professor, to get into your plane until we sign off these things. Uh, so uh, this, these are some of the items that we have in consultation because this spirit of innovation aligns seamlessly with the aspirations of the Africa continental free trade area, creating a dynamic network of ambitious, future-ready institutions and governments. Such collaboration will drive transformative engagements at the grassroots level, enabling Africa to achieve an unparalleled position in the global value chains and make substantial contribution to their bottom-up transformation. By promoting peer-to-peer -peer learning, this forum of AfriCities strengthens cooperation among sub-sovereign governments and devolution a tremendous innovation established under our 2010 constitution has evolved into an exemplary success story that Kenyans are very proud of as it has brought services closer to the people, empowered grassroots participation in governance, and safeguarded minority rights and enhanced equity in resource mobilization and allocation. And I want to agree with the CS Treasury that we have made as a government a conscious decision that we will go out of our way to support devolution and to make sure that there is timeless release of resources to the counties. Although there has not been any framework, we decided that we will get um, an advisory from the Attorney General to allow us to support counties, even as the other formalities and constitutional imperatives are being met. I have also agreed with the leadership of Parliament that Parliament will not go into recess unless they conclude both DORA and CARA. And um, I think I have it on the authority of both leaders of majority and both speakers that we want to conclude that exercise so that we allow the counties to execute their mandate without unnecessary uh, roadblocks. AFRIEXIM as a Pan-African multilateral institution was envisioned by African leaders as a bold and innovative mechanism to address Africa's unique financing needs. Its initiatives such as the Pandemic Trade Impact Mitigation Facility and the Fund for Export Development in Africa exemplify its commitment to mitigating economic shocks, fostering sustainable industrialization, and radically enhancing intra-African trade. These initiatives underscore AFRIEXIM's pivotal role in driving the continent's economic transformation and achieving a sustainable and inclusive growth uh, trajectory. Again, to underscore the Pan-African payment and settlement system that was ably said by the CS for Treasury. That as a country, we are champions because we want to remove unnecessary currency challenges. Professor tells us we lose about $5 billion every year on just exchange rate losses because of moving from one currency to another, from one country to another, the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System now gives us an opportunity for all African countries to trade in our local currencies without necessarily having to mind about which currency, which product from which country is being traded. That gives us the latitude and the framework to build the momentum around the Africa continental free trade area. And uh, President Oma, o Orama, I want to tell you, we are grateful as leaders in this continent that you are thinking ahead of time and providing solutions to the challenges that come our way. <laughs> Closer home, Kenya has greatly benefited from ACTRIEXIM support through the Kenya Country Program. And I have said the three billion has been allocated to support our nation's key priority over the next three years, aligning with our bottom-up economic transformation agenda. This substantial investment 
will support programs and projects in value chains under our strategic pillars of our economic transformation plan, including agriculture. And again, uh, you know how passionate I am, Professor, with our farmers. Um, we have a $50 million facility for the Agricultural Finance Corporation, which again, we must sign off today. Because uh, my farmers need that $7.5 billion to be able to buy fertilizer, buy other farm inputs at below 8% interest rate. That way, we can better support whether it is our sugar cane farmers or our cotton farmers or maize or tea or coffee. Um, I, I, I'm told by my team that all has been agreed upon. And, uh, and buddy, please, you better have ink in your pen so that we can sign this off today. Together with our uh, medium and small and, and, and uh, micro enterprises, the digital superhighway, the creative economy, and industrialization sectors, as well as securing critical commodities such as petroleum, rice, and fertilizers. Again, as Professor Orama said, and um, uh, CS Treasury has said, the whole ecosystem of creating jobs around our special economic zones. We have now seven new special economic zones. One in Dongokundu, one in Kirinyaga, one in Thika, one in Eldred, here in Kisumu, one in uh, Busia. All these special economic zones, and of course, the one in Naivasha, where we have agreed with Afri Exim, and we will be signing off, they will be providing resources for us to do the infrastructure to support these facilities so that we can again work with them in looking for the investors that will invest in these special economic zones for purposes of creating jobs for our young people, creating value for our products that we are producing, and making sure that we do more exports. And among the crops we are targeting for export going into the future, as opposed to import, is sugar. As I said, this year we were blessed. We produced more sugar than we consume for the first time in many years. And I'm looking forward to carrying out additional reforms in that sector. We've just passed the sugar law that is now going to provide greater um, space and, and, and a better focus on matters policy to support the whole industry in this region so that instead of spending a lot of our money importing stuff, including sugar, we will instead be looking at mechanisms of export. And the partnership we are putting together with Afriexim will help us unlock that potential. Africa continues to face a deep economic crisis caused by a variety of complex challenges, ranging from slowing global trade, rising energy costs, and high food prices. These challenges are further compounded by a public debt burden that has reached concerning levels. Without a doubt, committed and consistent collective action is essential to deepen African integration, enhance our collective economic resilience, and promote greater levels of intra-Africa trade. Equally certain is the fact that going forward, Pan-African transformation will increasingly depend on institutions like Afri Exim and many others to mobilize resources and create a conducive environment for investment in job creation, poverty reduction, industrialization, and a stronger export performance and accelerated development through intra-Africa trade. Allow me also to confirm to you um, the sentiments expressed by the governor of Kisumu on matters to do with the lake ecosystem in terms of transport, in terms of facilities. And I want to confirm to the people of this region that the Carbonio uh, fish facility here that will provide seven million fingerlings every year is off to a start to make sure that we restock Lake Victoria and to make it much more viable for our uh, fishermen and women. 
We are off to a start in the 10 landing sites along Lake Victoria from Busia all the way to Migori, specifically here in Kisumu. We have agreed with Professor here that we are putting up a landing site in Asat and Ogal. Um, the advert for the same will be out in January and we're going to spend about 300 million shillings to make sure that those facilities are available and they will be managed by the county government of Kisumu to make sure that uh, uh, they also add additional uh, facilities to facilitate um, um, the whole fishing ecosystem in our region. It is a big shame for us to import fish from Asia in the 21st century, 60 years after independence. That speaks volumes of uh, the things we should not be doing. Um, secondly, I want to confirm to you again, Professor, as you have talked about uh, the fishing boards and the entire fishing uh, ecosystem with support in training and in making sure that uh, the lake ecosystem has the necessary infrastructure. Again, I am looking forward to your partnership with my ministry responsible for uh, maritime affairs and, uh, and fisheries. We have an 800 million shilling facility for fish boats and training of your fisher folk. Again, beginning January, if you can have a conversation with, uh, with um, um, CS Joho and his team, we are aligned to make sure that the whole of this Lake Victoria front from Busia all the way to Migori uh, benefits from this facility as we improve our food security and ensuring that we um, import less and export more. And finally, because there have been major accidents, and you've said it heavily in, the, in Lake Victoria, and we lose a lot of people because of facilities that are not uh, adequate, because of some of the um, infrastructure that is not uh, proper, we have decided to do uh, Lake Victoria Rescue and Coordination Center here. We are putting 2.7 billion shillings to make sure that any accident in Lake Victoria is attended to in record time so that we can better support the whole ecosystem there and make sure that this is going uh, forward. Allow me to say one more thing. I think uh, Professor has ably said that this city can also provide a destination for conferencing and, um, and other facilities. And we need to leverage on the tourism assets that are available in Kisumu and the whole of this lake region. And therefore, the conference facility that is here in Kisumu, that was an investment of the national government. I want to confirm that uh, we are ready to have a conversation with Kisumu County, and we want to bring our friends at FreeXim on board so that through a public-private partnership, we can actually have uh, an investment in, that, in the completion of that facility in the building of the hotel so that we can have a management uh, program that will make sure that we unlock the potential of that facility where government resources have already been invested in. I know Professor understands very well, because he was our Minister for Planning, what public-private partnership can achieve. And uh, there will be no problems of people saying anybody wants to sell any asset in Kisumu. So um, I look forward, Professor, to having that engagement so that we can bring infrastructure facilities as we go into the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to, in a very special way, thank Chelta Afrique and team, and my good brother, the Secretary General, Chelta Afrique and team, and my good brother, the Secretary General, for what they are doing, as I confirm to you, uh, the Minister of the uh, uh, under procurement in Kisumu County and 50,000 units along the five counties in this uh, region. We have a big program 
on making sure that because the future is urban, we must prepare for it and we must provide the infrastructure so that our urban areas do not become slums or places of poverty, but becomes active ecosystems of young people to get jobs and for us to move into the future. So our leadership on that front is on course. And uh, when I am called upon to make a report under BICRAP, I will have a good report. You don't have to worry. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for attending this conference. I wish you fruitful deliberations and encourage you to take some time out of your busy schedules to enjoy the delightful attractions of our Lake City. The fourth sub-sovereign network conference is now opened. Thank you very much. God bless you. And God bless our country. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. If I may request Your Excellency for a quick photo. If you remain on stage kindly, and let me invite the Governor Kisumu County, CS Treasury. Let's take our seats, please. The rest of us kindly, let's take our seats. Governor Kisumu, CS Treasury, Professor Orama, SG Jean Pierre, uh, EVP, Mrs. Kanayo, and Shelter Freak CEO. If you can join His Excellency on stage.